Hello everyone, it's Kemikato. Welcome back to another episode of Synthesis Studio. In this tutorial, I'm gonna take a deep dive into the total synthesis of Cyan TV Gen U. This compound belongs to the D-terpenoid family and was isolated from a Jamaican sponge back in 2002. As you can see, there are several structurally related compounds, all of them share a similar core structure where an indine skeleton is fused to a cycloheptane ring. The key chemistry of this synthesis route is alkane metathesis. So let's review the mechanism. Generally speaking, in alkane metathesis, two alkanes react with an appropriate catalyst to form two new alkanes. There are several types of alkane metathesis. The inner molecular version is called cross metathesis. The intramolecular version is divided into ring-closing metathesis and ring-opening metathesis. Mechanistically, a metal alkylidine complex reacts with an olefin via a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction to produce a metallous cyclobutene. After that, it undergoes a 2 plus 2 cycloreversion to form a new metal alkylidine complex. What happens here is that R1 and R4 substituents switch positions. Next, another olefin enters the catalytic cycle and reacts with the newly formed metal alkylidine complex. After another cycloreversion, a new alkene leaves the cycle and the metal alkylidine is ready to start again. If you look at the whole reaction, two new alkenes enter the catalytic cycle and interact with the catalyst. The outcome is that the R1 substituent is transferred onto the second olefin and R4 is transferred from the catalyst to the first olefin. Notice that all steps in this catalytic cycle are reversible. To increase the rate of the forward reaction, we can use two terminal alkenes. In this setup, ethylene gas is formed as one of the products, and it seems that the gas it can be removed from the system. This helps drive the equilibrium toward the product side. Now let's take a closer look at what we want to build. Look at the folded structure of cyan gene U. The 7 membered ring and the 6 membered ring are fused in a trans configuration. You can see the methyl group pointing downward while the hydrogen is pointing outward. On the other side of the molecule, the 6 and 5 membered ring are fused in a cis fashion. In other words, both the methyl and the hydrogen are in the same plane. This unique stereochemistry makes cyan gen u a challenging synthetic target. In 2005, Philips Group presented an interesting strategy to construct this molecule. So let's go through the synthesis route. The synthesis begins with methoxyalin. It's treated together with TMEDA and n lithium. Due to electronic effect of the methoxy group, this hydrogen atom is relatively acidic. What's gonna happen here is that n lithium acts as a base, abstracts the proton, and turns methoxyalin into its active form, making it a suitable nucleophile. Notice that the reaction is carried out at minus 30 degree, where n lithium typically exists as a tetramer. TMEDA is added as an additive. Because nitrogen has a strong tendency to coordinate to lithium, TMEDA binds to the lithium atoms in n lithium and breaks up the tetramer into a more reactive dimeric form. After activating methoxyalin, an antiomerically pure camphor is added to the mixture. Now the stage is set for nucleophilic attack of methoxyalin on the carbonyl group of camphor. Notice that the isopropylidine bridge points toward the front because of this strict hindrance the nucleophile attacks from the opposite face. As a result, the newly formed alcohol ends up pointing outward. In the next step, this intermediate reacts with HCl. There are two carbon atoms that can potentially be protonated. But, thanks to the non-bonding electrons on the methoxy group, this one is more reactive. As a result, carbocationic center is formed, setting the stage for a nucleophilic attack by water. 
which leads to the formation of a tetrahedral inner mediate. After that, methanol leaves the molecule, and an unsaturated ketone is produced. If you wanna get familiar with alin chemistry and learn more about their beautiful reactivity pattern, check out this video. In the next step, the unsaturated ketone reacts with a double bond whose ester tail is protected by a pivaloyl group. This is an inner molecular alkene metathesis reaction. Pause the video and try to provide a mechanism based on what you learned at the beginning of the video. Go ahead and give it a shot now. Notice that two terminal alkenes are used in this metathesis reaction. So the formation of ethylene gas drives the reaction forward. The other product is a new alkene. What happens here is that the two separate alkenes are connected by the catalyst. Second generation Grubbs catalyst is used in this reaction. Actually, there are three generations of Grubbs catalyst based on ruthenium, which are widely used in organic synthesis due to their bench stability and high selectivity. In our case, the second generation Grubbs catalyst provides significant E selectivity. In the next step, 1,4-dimethyl cyclohexadiene reacts with the enone. In this reaction, the enone acts as a dienophile, reacting with dimethyl cyclohexadiene, which is an electron-rich diene. So, this is a classic 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. In our case, the conformoidy on the diagonophile plays a crucial role in controlling the diastereoselectivity. Due to strict hindrance, the diagonophile approaches the diagon from the side opposite to the bulky substituents. In other words, the conformoidy acts as a chiral auxiliary, inducing chirality in the product. After the precise installation of the chiral centers, we no longer need the chiral auxiliary. So, comfer is removed from the molecule. Ceric ammonium nitrate is a strong oxidizing reagent that's frequently used for removing protecting groups. As you can see, it cleaves this carbon-carbon bond and converts the ketone into carboxylic acid. In the following steps, two new aldehyde groups are introduced into the molecule. This intermediate contains both a carboxylic acid and a protected alcohol. Lithium aluminum hydride is strong enough to reduce both of these functional groups, converting them into the corresponding alcohols. After that, the two primary alcohols undergo suran oxidation to form the corresponding aldehydes. Afterward, two vinylic substituents are installed on the molecule. Pause the video and think about what reagents can be used for this transformation. Vinyl magnesium bromide is an appropriate reagent for forming carbon-carbon bonds by attacking aldehydes. But here's the catch, it converts aldehydes into alcohols. So in the next step, these alcohols are oxidized using desmarting protocol to produce the corresponding ketones. As you can see, the structural changes throughout this transformation are significant and the main skeleton of our target molecule is formed. What we are looking at is actually a cascade of intramolecular alkene metathesis reactions. Interestingly, there are two possible pathways for this transformation, both leading to the same product. Let's first analyze path A. In this route, three double bonds participate in metathesis. First, note that this particular double bond is more reactive than the others due to ring strain. So it reacts first with Grubbs catalyst. This step is ring opening metathesis reaction. If you look at the 3D model, you can clearly see that ruthenium and this double bond come close together, setting up for formation of the 7-membered ring through ring closing metathesis. Drawing the product can be a little bit tricky. I suggest you try sketching it on paper. When it comes to drawing complex structures, naming or numbering is the best strategy. Here's how I do it. 
just assign a number to each carbon atom of the 7 membered ring. It doesn't matter where you start. Based on my numbering, you will see that a 6 membered ring is fused to carbon 1 and 2. Once we clean up the structure and install the substituents, you will arrive at the desired product. After the first ring is closed, the remaining two double bonds are now ready for the second ring closing metathesis reaction. Treating this intermediate with Grubbs catalyst produces the final fused free ring system with all substituents in the correct stereochemistry. It's such a beautiful cascade of alkene metathesis and it really shows how effective this strategy is. Now let's consider path B. The difference lies in the first step. Here, ruthenium binds to the different double bond. As a result, the 5-membered ring is formed before the 7-membered ring. Then, the second ring closing metathesis step completes the formation of the 7-membered ring. However, the final product remains the same in either pathway. In the next step, this intermediate is reduced by lithium aluminum hydride. There are actually two conjugated ketones that can potentially be attacked by hydride. Moreover, for each conjugated ketone, both 1-2 and 1-4 addition pathways are possible. However, only one specific carbonyl group is reduced selectively. Keep in mind that 1-4 addition is a thermodynamic product, while 1-2 addition is a kinetic product, meaning it proceeds faster than 1-4 addition. In this reaction, only 0.25 equivalents of lithium aluminum hydride are used, which is a low amount. So the reaction follows the faster path. That's why 1-2 addition is a major product. Now let's talk about stereochemistry. Look at the 3D model of the structure. The electrophile can approach from either the convex or concave face of the folded molecule. But the concave face is blocked by bulky substituents, making it strictly inaccessible. As a result, the carbonyl group on the 7-membered ring is attacked from the convex face, leading to a product with 10 to 1 diastereoselectivity. After the reduction, an isopropyl group is added to this carbonyl carbon. Pause the video and think about different modes of reaction. Try to figure out what reagents could accomplish this transformation. Once again, we are dealing with a chemoselective reaction. The nucleophile can add via a 1,4 Michael addition or a direct 1,2 addition. In this case, isopropyl lithium is used. It's a suitable carbon-based nucleophile that attacks directly at the carbonyl group. Why? Because the lithium carbon is considered as hard metal carbon bound due to lithium's high electropositivity. Similarly, the carbon-oxygen double bond is also classified as hard thanks to the large electronegativity differences between carbon and oxygen. Additionally, the presence of cerium chloride enhances the electrophilicity of the carbonyl carbon by coordinating to the oxygen atom. Based on the hard-hard and soft-soft interaction principle, this favors 1-2 addition over 1-4 addition. In the next step, treatment of this intermediate with PCC leads to the oxidation of both vinylic alcohols. Interestingly, the position of this alcohol is changed during this process. Unlike vinylic hydroxyl group on a 7 membered ring, this alcohol lacks an alpha hydrogen, and that's the reason for the migration. Mechanistically, the oxygen atom of the alcohol attacks a chromium atom, forming a chromium oxygen bond. Then, this oxygen attacks a nearby double bond, triggering a free free sigmatropic rearrangement. Following that, an alpha hydrogen assists in breaking the chromium oxygen bond, resulting in the formation of a new carbonyl group. Finally, this ketone is attacked by methyl lithium, leading to installation of a methyl group. Due to the folded structure we discussed earlier, this addition precedes diastereoselectivity. 
Again, based on the hard hard soft soft principle, the kinetic one-two product is the favored pathway.